Have you are you familiar with the uh, Shakespeare, the Bard of Avon? No. Well, uh, he was a legendary uh, playwright from uh, from England. We, uh, my mom used to uh, read me some of his plays. The, the, the better watched, obviously. But uh, in his play, A Midsummer Night's Dream, the fairy queen, she was called Titania. Yeah. And uh, her husband was the fairy king, Oberon. And they just, they just minded their own business. They had a little, uh, a fairy messenger type called Puck, and uh, he caused a lot of uh, chaos. He was a bit of a prankster. Wasn't a bad person by any stretch of the means, but he liked messing with the people who roamed the woods. Hmm, I can understand that. <clears throat> I think the only thing I ever remembered of his was uh, Once More Under the Breach. What's that? Oh, it's a speech by uh, one of our kings back home sometime back. Oh, do you know it by heart? Mm -hmm. no. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. We'll close the wall up with our English dead. Once more, under the breach, dear friends, once more. We'll close the wall up with our English dead. In peace, there's nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war blows in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger, stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature, with hard favoured rage. Then lend the eye a terrible aspect. Let pry through the portage of the head. Like the brass cannon. Let the brow overwhelm it. As fearfully as doth a galled rock. Overhang and jutty his confounded base. Swilled with the wild and wasteful ocean. Now set the teeth and stretch the nostrils wide. Hold hard the breath and bend up every spirit to his full height. On and on, you noblest English, whose blood is fet from fathers of war-proof. Fathers, like so many Alexanders, have in these parts from morn till evening fought and sheath their swords for lack of argument. Dishonor not your mothers. Now attest that those whom you call fathers did beget you. Be copying out a men of grosser blood and teach them how to war. And you, good yeoman, whose limbs were made in England, show us here the metal of your pasture. Let us swear that you were worth your breeding, which I doubt not. For there is none of you so mean and base that hath not noble luster in your eyes. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the star. The game's afoot, follow your spirit, and upon this charge cry, God for Harry, England and St. George. Yeah, I think that's how it goes. That was amazing. I'm uh, very much impressed. That was mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Have uh, have you thought about going into theatre? You got a lovely voice for the stage. Mm-hmm. No, 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 it's not really my thing. 